everyone a warm welcome to our service this morning for those of us that are joining us in the hall you're very welcome and for those of us that are joining online too we do give you a very warm welcome this morning just before we open the scriptures we're just going to have a word of prayer shall we pray Father, we do just thank thee that we're able to come together this morning, that we're able to open thy word, the Bible, that we're able just to speak well concerning the Lord Jesus, of him being the saviour of the world, the only one that can save, the one that came to seek and to save that which was lost. And oh, our Father, it would be our prayer, even again this morning, that if there are any that do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ for themselves, that today would be that wondrous day when they would simply come in faith and trust, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we do just give thee thanks. We do pray for help to be given as we simply open thy word and speak from it. So we give thee thanks now in his precious and worthy name. Amen. Now, if you have a Bible, please, we're going to turn to the book of Luke. Excuse me. The book of Luke. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. <clears throat> and we're going to read the whole of the chapter. If you haven't got a Bible, don't worry, I will read carefully as I can this is what it says Luke chapter 15 verse 1 then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him and the Pharisees and scribes murmured saying this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them and he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbours, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, Doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbours together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, and took his journey into the far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent unto him his fields, sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish 
with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a right, put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh of the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. And would not go in, therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. Now we know that God will bless the reading of his precious word. Now the Lord Jesus <clears throat> here. speak unto the people three parables the first we have the title the lost sheep second the lost coin and thirdly the prodigal son now firstly I think what we need to do is look again at verse 1 at verse 1 and this is what it says then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him and the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Now, why do I read that again? Well, the Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus didn't come to call the righteous. The Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus came to call sinners to repentance. That is why he came. He came to be that great substitute. And we find here in verse 2 that the Pharisees and scribes murmured, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Do you know something though? These ones here, they didn't realise, the Pharisees and the scribes, that they too were sinners. They too had done wrong. Because the Bible tells us for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Now, that's very simple, isn't it? All. If I ask one of the children, what does all mean? Does it disclude anybody? No. No, it doesn't. The Bible clearly tells us all have sinned. We've all fallen short of God's high standard. And we cannot reach it. And the Lord Jesus goes on to tell these parables. And the first we find is this man who had a hundred sheep. A hundred sheep. Now they say, don't they, if you can't sleep. They say, count sheep. Oh, that was what was always said years ago. Count sheep. Well, I don't know about you. I don't find sleeping very easy. 
And I struggle sometimes. And I'll be truthful. I have tried to count sheep before. And it doesn't work. Not for me anyway. Count sheep. But what do we find here? What, does, what is the Lord Jesus saying to us here? The Lord Jesus is saying this to them. Having a hundred sheep, if he lose one, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go which is lost until he find it. Well, I don't know about you, but many people, if they had a hundred, that's quite a big amount. Josiah, is a hundred a big amount? Yeah. Hundreds a big, just making sure the children are listening. A hundred's a big amount. It's a big amount. So somebody, if they lose one, and they have a hundred of something, they might just, oh, it doesn't matter. It's only one. It doesn't really matter. Does one matter? Does one matter? Dear friend, I want to tell you this morning, one does matter. You matter, excuse me, you matter to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ. You matter. People sometimes say, nobody loves me, nobody cares. Oh dear friend, there's one who does. There's one who understands, there's one who knows everything about each and every one of us. And you know something, that's a bit scary. People here, some people know me. They know bits about me, but they don't know everything. Not everything. Things that nobody else knows. God does. God knows everything. And do you know something? God can have nothing to do with sin. But God loves the sinner. God loves the sinner. And dear friend, this morning, the message is this. God is interested in you. God loves you. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And what do we find? Having a hundred sheep. Oh no, that one is important. He goes out and he looks for it. And he searches in the highways and the byways. Searching for that one that is lost. And what does he find? When he... Verse 5. He found it, laid it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbours, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Oh dear friend, if we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, if we trust upon him, there is rejoicing in heaven over one that repents, one who turns and accepts the Lord Jesus Christ for themselves, there's rejoicing. Why? Because that one that was lost is found. That one that was in danger is saved. That one that was in a terrible place and situation has now been rescued. Safe and secure. And dear friend, that is a message today. We can be safe, we can be secure in the arms of God himself. If we trust in him. And then where do we find? The Lord Jesus again tells another parable of a lost coin. Now, I don't know about you again. I'm just checking I've actually got them. I don't know if you can see on the camera. Car key. So, well, why are you talking about a car key? Well, we're talking here about a lost coin. And I don't really have that many coins. But I always seem to lose this. Can never find it. I put it down somewhere. And then I'm looking for it. I'm searching for it. And like this lady that we're told here, she had. Ten pieces of silver, and she lost one, and she lit the candle, and she swept the house, and she was searching and searching and searching and searching, looking for that one that was lost.
We can search, we can look. Because things can get lost. And we rejoice and we're happy when we find it. The Lord Jesus wants us to come to him. The Lord Jesus wants us to come to him. We're in need of a saviour. We're in need of rescue. It would be no good, dear friend, if I... Well, you wouldn't catch me doing it anyway, it's far too cold. But if I was swimming in the North Sea, if I went up to Seaton, if I went up to Seaton there, and I got my shorts on, and I, and I thought, I'm going to go for a swim in the sea. And I started to get into trouble. And then somebody goes to me, Jonathan, there is a life ring. Grab hold of it, and you will be safe. Well, if I just turned round and said, I don't want that, I'm going to try and do my own thing, and I'm going to try and swim back. It would be foolishness, wouldn't it? When there is something there that is able to save us. When there's something there that is able to rescue us. And yet, you know what, dear friends? There is a way of salvation. There is a way that we can be made right with God. And many people say, not for me. Not for me. I don't want it. I don't want him. Is that not what they said when the Lord Jesus Christ was on this earth? Not for me. I don't want him. I want to do it my way. Was that not the great song that Frank Sinatra sang? My way. Oh dear friends, if we do it our way, we are lost forever in our sin and should expect the judgment of God to be upon us. That is what our way leads us to. Away from God. Oh, but dear friend, if we go God's way, and what is God's way? Through the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The Bible tells us, and I, and people who come here and people who listen online, I say it every time, but I love the verse and I can't get away from it. The Lord Jesus said of himself, I am the way. There is no other way. He is the only way. The truth and the life. Oh dear friend, we can rely upon him. We can trust him. There are many things in this world of ours that we cannot trust. That we cannot rely upon. Oh, but we can rely upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He's never failed. And never will fail. He loves you. He came into this world to die for you. He shed his precious blood at Calvary's cross. He's made it possible that you can be rescued, that you can be saved, and that you can be sure. Sure. Oh, that's a thing, dear friend, to be sure. To be sure. To have peace. Real peace within. Real peace. Peace in knowing that we are saved. Knowing that we have a home in heaven. Knowing that we are rescued. And what does this lady do? She finds that which is lost. Verse 9. And when she had found it, she called up her friends and her neighbours together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace I had lost. Likewise I say unto, thee, say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Oh, dear friend, God is interested in you. He is interested in you, dear friend. But he won't force himself on anyone. We have to come to him. We have to simply come. Lastly, we get this scene of the prodigal son. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of him said to his father, Give me, give me, give me, give me what is mine. What is my due? I want it, and I want it now. Is that not society in a nutshell? Give me, give me, give me, give me. I, 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 want, want, want. And what do we find? 
he was given it. He went away. And he wasted the substance that he had with riotous living. And he spent all. He had nothing left. And there was a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. Oh, he began to be in want. He was in need. Do we feel our need this morning? Well, what do you mean? Do I feel my need? A need of a saviour. Do we feel that our sin? Do we feel our sin? Or do we just think... Well, I enjoy it too much. I enjoy the things of this world too much. I want to do what I want to do. I want to go where I want to go. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do the other. I'm not interested. Oh, we have to come to a realisation that we have a need. But you know what the wonderful thing is this? We can have that need met. We can have that need met, dear friend. This man, oh yeah, he spent all. He spent all. He was in need. He was in want. And you know something? What does he do? He starts to think back. He starts to think back and he looks. And he says. We find that he went and joined himself and he was looking after the pigs. And he would have eaten the food that the pigs had there. And what does he say? Verse 17. And when he came to himself, realization, when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. But listen carefully to this verse. Listen carefully to it. I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, now does he, what does he say first? This is important. I have sinned against heaven and before you. He doesn't say his father first, does he? Because when we sin, it's against God. It is against God. And he realized that he had sinned against God and his father. I will arise and say unto my father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Oh, he realized his guilt. He realized his need. And he was ready to confess it. He was ready, dear friend, to confess it. And that's what we need to do. Realize our guilt before God. And confess it to him. To him. What do we find? He arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a way off, his father saw him. And had compassion. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Oh, there was the love there. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. What happened? The father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him. Put the ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fitted calf, fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was a lost and is found. Oh dear friend, again. Read verse 10. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Oh dear friend, if we realise our guilt before a holy righteous God, and we confess our sin to him. He is just and willing to forgive us. Oh, and he will accept us as we are. 
because we've turned away from it and we've turned to him and that is what we simply have to do dear friend and there's rejoicing in heaven oh there was rejoicing in all three of these messages that we've looked at this morning first of all there was sadness oh first of all there was sadness there was despair because something was lost but when it was found oh there's rejoicing oh dear friend to be found to be rescued to be saved to be secure there's rejoicing in heaven what will you do with him what will you do with him will you just continue to go the way you're going not for me i'm not interested or will you simply take him at his word will you simply confess your sin to him and will you turn to him as the only savior of sinners and accept him for yourself oh dear friend there are many today that can say that they've come to know him for themselves and he has never let them down oh dear friend we let him down so often but he's never let us down never let us down never forsaken us once saved always saved we cannot lose our salvation but we have to simply come to him and repent and what do we find when repentance is there there's rejoicing there's rejoicing shall we pray father we do just give thee thanks for our time spent together this morning we do thank thee father that we've been able to look at these three parables the lost sheep the lost coin and the prodigal son and oh our father we think of this world of ours and there are so many people oh our father that do not yet know the lord jesus christ for themselves oh father we pray that today would be that wondrous day when they would turn from their sin turn into the one who was sinless undefiled and separate from sinners perfect in every single way that was why he could die on calvary's cross that is why he could pay the price of sin and oh father our prayer would be even this morning and, and even this day that men women and boys and girls would repent turn away from their sin and trust the savior for themselves father we do thank thee for time spent together we do pray for safety on the roads as we would go our separate ways now and ever give thee thanks in his most precious and worthy name. Amen.